We want our sons to cry the tears of humankind, of fear and disgust and pain. We want our daughters raging in the sludge and soil, the trauma and lies and shame, it's in stained cheeks and mud that healing can come. It's in spit and ache that the freedom flag waves. We've been told the forbidden fruits made a space for darkness to enter, but also that broken bits are where the light comes in. We've been told that snowflakes are something to be hated, but I have never seen a cloud crystal dancing downward and thought of disdain. It's not the weather, nor the food, nor the metaphor that strips us of our dignity. It's the broken hearts hiding their shame, pumping an irregular broken beat, convincing you that yours should be the same. So, dear apples of my eye, let's take those grapes of wrath with a grain of salt and a teaspoon of sorrow. Their trauma will live on in the orchards they burn and the harvest they do not sow, but their failings will not bring us joy. Our sons will turn from toxicity the most refreshing of soft rains. Our daughters will run from control the most intense of lightning storms. For in facing our destruction, we create new possibility. In naming the shadow, it becomes a light. In grappling with our affliction, we are unfathomably powerful. We can grow and learn and do more than just make do. We can grow our future fruit and eat it too. survive this long. Why not? I didn't think I would let myself. Oh? Yes, my mind has a way of stopping me. Stopping you from doing things? Stopping me from, well, everything. When you say that you didn't think you would make it to this age, were you saying that you would you would have died by suicide by now? Yes. Do you really think it was an accident, you cutting your arm? Maybe it was an accident that I cut as deep as I did. Was it? I like to believe it was. So it wasn't an accident? I told you it was an accident, and it was. Okay. Okay? I don't believe you, but we can go on. I just don't want to say it wasn't an accident. I know. Do I really have to say it out loud? Well, that's up to you, I suppose. It makes it real if I say it out loud. He's on top of me. Asleep? Wake up. He was on top of me. My clothes. Why do I hurt? It smells bad. It hurts. Hospital? Maybe, but they'll think. I'm lying, or I'm just a slut. Rape kit. Swab. Breathe. <sighs> Alert. Nurses, doctors, police. And 
searching all the time. And I can't sleep anymore. Hi. How are you today? Are you ready to start our session? They will love me for that which destroys me. Sick. Infected with hunger. Fat. Skinny. I hate mirrors. I hate getting dressed. I hate myself. Binge. Or purge. Or starve. I ache. Wilting. Dying. You are severely underweight. Skin and bones. I know that. You need to eat. No. Why not? I don't want to. Why? It hurts. What hurts? Your stomach? No. Then what? My brain? Your brain hurts? Yeah. Now? When I eat. Okay. Your brain hurts when you eat. Yeah. What should we do about that? We? What should we do about that? You don't want my help? I don't want any help. Do you have any favorite food? No, not anymore. What was your favorite food? Do you remember? No. You have to eat something every once in a while. No, food is... Come on. What do you eat? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay. I wish that I was just bones. Bones? You said that I was skin and bones. I wish that I was just bones. You wish you were dead. Everyone praises me for something that makes me wish I were dead. And they followed me here. Where do we go when we fall asleep? Darkness. Slipping through dreamland. Sleeping next to them. Listening to me. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Voices. Don't stop them. Stop. Don't. Mindlessly. Mindlessly. They're what? Clues, medication. Unconscious. Stupid. Burden. Pill. Fail. Weak. Bird. Foot. Vampire. Microchip. In the government. Theory in theory. Reset. Charging. Racing. Thoughts. Racing. Something. Nothing. Something. Pick. Pill. Pick. Pill. Pick. Pill. Absolute shit. Depression. Trauma is shit. Drugs? They help. The pain? It stops. For a little while. At least. At least. I want to stop. I can't stop. I don't want to stop. A curse. A disease. I can't stop. Circles around circles. Circling the... Drain. Shackles. Chains. It's a prison. There is emerging evidence that internalized stigma increases risk for suicide among individuals with serious mental illness. Suicide is the tenth leading cause of death for all ages. It is more common than homicide. Forty percent of LGBTQ youth seriously considered suicide in past year, survey finds. One in twelve has a substance use disorder. Medics missing mental illness diagnosis in more than one in four patients data suggests concerning disparities exist between ethnic groups. One in five Americans experience a mental health disorder during any given year. The percentage of adults in America reporting serious thoughts of suicide is 4.34%. That's 9,364,275 people. Mental health. Internalized stigma. Sense of belonging. Inequality. Oppression. Intersectionality. Distress. 
mental illness. When I came to school, um, it was pretty good until there was a point where I was just kind of depressed. I didn't want to go to class. Um, I just really wasn't functioning how you should be, and it really just took me, you know, sitting up and saying, hey, I need to get this done, or I need to ask for help, and I can't do this on my own, so that's what I did. It changes you drastically, maybe not all at once, but mental illness is something that I have little control over, even with medication and therapy. Certain traumas will never leave me, and the older I've gotten, the more accepting I've become of what I'll have to deal with for the rest of my life. I'm continuously learning and observing my emotional and mental behavior, wondering how there are people who don't live like this. It affects everything, from daily activities like showering or even leaving bed, to events like backing out on the last second on plans. It affects the people who care about you. It's weight loss. It's sleeping 23 hours a day and not showering or brushing your hair for a week. My dad spent a good chunk of my childhood in bed with migraines. I think many people's issues in life come from money problems and high expectations. If we found creative ways to make money more accessible and expectations to be a little less dire, we would all be a lot more fulfilled. Overall, mental illness and mental wellness are present and play into my everyday world. I'm a survivor of trauma, I have an anxiety disorder, and I am now a therapist. I believe people do not think enough about the importance of mental health. I have dealt with anxiety for as long as I can remember. My first association being when I was four, to my knowledge. I have dealt with depression for a few years now and PTSD since I was continuously raped at the age of 15 for five months. I've struggled with mental illness for almost 20 years. My mental wellness has been a huge struggle for the past two years. I find it hard to ever talk about things or express my thoughts, feelings, emotions. Some days, it's hard to understand. I have a history of manic depression and family history of schizophrenia. It was never something I heard or thought about until college. Now I know several people with anxiety and depression. I struggle knowing whether my own anxiety is diagnosable or just normal stress. I have a family member who's distant from the family because of mental illness. I've had a persistent, low-grade depression since about 12. I have an almost invisible sense of self-esteem. I believe that my mother had undiagnosed mental issues. At one point, my father was wondering if he should consider hospitalizing her. I believe that most people I've worked with in the arts have mental health problems to various degrees. Several have attempted suicide. Some of those have completed it. I think I have anxiety, but have never been diagnosed. It started as stomach issues in college, but nothing the doctors did seemed to help. Now it's occasionally stomach issues, but more teeth grinding and skin picking. My husband had panic attacks in college that I attempted to help him through. My roommate in college was depressed, and it was through living with all her ups and downs that forced me to educate myself on mental illness. My sister suffers from depression and has regular counseling. Mental illness runs in the family. I haven't decided which one to go with yet. Every day. It's a driving factor for my work productivity, home life, how I run errands, and how I handle those around me. It dictates how I treat others and what I'm able to accomplish in a day. Some days I'm extroverted and productive. Other days I don't want to get out of bed, struggle finishing simple tasks, and get immediately annoyed at the thought of socializing. For friends, it can cause manic episodes or even battles with suicidal thoughts. I always think of mental health as being a positive way of looking at it, and mental illness as the negative of that for some reason. 90 to 95 percent of those who die by suicide have a mental illness, and my senior year of high school, my friend died by suicide. The past two years have been awful, and I've learned things about myself and experienced emotions I didn't even know were possible. It's hard to deal with some days. It's impossible to understand. For the first few months, I was desperate to understand why. I came to see that I would never get this answer. I no longer search for the why or the reason behind this, but I instead search for purpose. 
There's purpose in my daily life that wasn't there before. I miss my friend so incredibly much, and I wish she'd reached out to someone. No one had any idea of the pain she was in. A friend of mine asked me what I'd have done if I'd known she was in pain. I replied I would have loved her even more. I would have hugged her and never let her feel alone. I have experienced depression for which I am taking meds and attended therapy in the past. It affects me every day. Some days more than others, but it's debilitating. My anxiety keeps me from doing the things I love. My PTSD keeps me from being with new people. And my depression keeps me from experiencing the joys in life that I know exist. I have had seasons of debilitating mental illness that have affected my work and personal lives. I have many friends and family that struggle as well. I have I've struggled with uh, anxiety and depression most of my life. At 21, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and PTSD. I consider myself a very mentally well person. I watch my diet, exercise, and then a job I love and make time for things that are important to me. There's only been one time in my life where I was seriously depressed and entertained thoughts of dying. Looking back, it was probably postpartum because my baby was six months old. I was just so tired. It seemed that no matter how much I slept, and my husband was very good about doing everything around the house with the baby and toddler, I just could not ever feel rested. It got to the point where I felt like it would be wonderful to just go to sleep and never wake up. At that point, I knew I was in trouble. I reached out to a friend, ready to ask for help via telephone, but her line was busy. I just made a decision that day that I had to get better. And little by little, every day got easier until I was no longer thinking of death. That was the only time. My depression has kept me locked up and closed up, and my anxiety has done the same. The illnesses never go away, but you learn to cope with them to be a better person. My depression and fear of being alone has affected me by subconsciously pushing others away so that I don't get hurt by them. I've also experienced panic attacks, which have resulted from thoughts and feelings of being alone. My grandmother and my birth father were both schizophrenic. My niece has bipolar disorder, and I'm depressed. My personal depression is extremely high functioning, but it makes me paranoid and anxious. I don't get enough time in my theater life to take my mental health to a professional regularly. The industry is so caught up in this toxic mindset that I worked for 90 hours this week, and I haven't slept in three days, and I skipped my meal break to get the work done, are all considered normal, good mentalities to have. I have depression and anxiety, and I'm going to therapy and being medicated for them both. I also know several people with the same diagnosis to varying degrees, as well as those with other diagnoses such as bipolar, schizophrenia, and OCD. My immediate family members have some mental illnesses, and it's a different but intimate kind of conversation when we decide we just need to let loose on some pent up emotion. We give each other a safe space where we can confide in one another. Recurrent depression since I was a teen. Medication for it makes me feel worse. While it's better and perhaps more manageable, it's never really gone. I've learned to carry the weight better, but that doesn't mean it's not heavy. I grew up with my sister having a mental disorder. Now I'm battling my own. You know, with hindsight, I look back and I feel like most of the problems that I had as a kid were due to my depression. I can look back now in particular as a teacher, being able to see how kids interact with kids. It gives me more insight into what was actually taking place in interactions that I was a part of when I was a kid. From my perspective, what it looked like was that everyone hated me and I didn't think I had any friends and I didn't think that people cared about me and I was just trying to protect myself. Looking back, I realized that wasn't the case at all, that kids were just being kids around me and I was hypersensitive to what they were saying. I think at least in part because of my depression. So I was overreacting to what the kids were doing and I misinterpreted what was happening and then as a result, my whole world was negative and unpleasant. 
And a lot of my personality, you know, throughout the early part of my life came from that misunderstanding, that misperception of what the world was like. Let's talk about stigma. I feel like mental wellness and illness is no longer stigmatized in today's society. Yeah, it used to be, but it seems to be a normal thing to discuss these days. I felt like very much less of a person because of some of my choices, especially drugs and how people looked at me once they found out. Stigma has been a factor. There have been things about which I felt shame and some for which I've been shamed. I think that stigma over my homosexuality still emerges in my thinking from time to time. And I have to recognize it is not valid. It's an ongoing process of discovery and recognition. Well, during that one period, I was reluctant to tell anyone what I was thinking, but that was 35 years ago. I've seen a good friend who seemed 100% okay kill himself, and it was such a shock to people because no one really took him seriously when he did open up and say things that were really depressing. I've also just seen it affect my current relationship. He's very closed about it, but I can tell. People try and hide it because they feel like they're a burden, but they aren't. It's taken me years and years to understand that. Growing up, there was a lot of stigma surrounding mental health, and everyone thinks you're crazy or that you're a sinner. My experience has been this. For the person who doesn't have a special need, disability, or brain injury, which infers they are a typical human being, every person on the planet deals with mental illness, a brokenness of the mind that they can't shake, a brokenness that is based off of unhealthy activities, thinking, relationships, and trauma. A brokenness that can only be made whole if it is based out of truth. To a certain extent, I never really cared about what other people said about my mental illness, but I'm like that as a person in general. I will say that I am more sensitive to people calling me crazy or telling me I'm being controlling by setting boundaries for myself and the people around me. I feel like mental health and suicide aren't talked about like they should be, so it makes me feel like I shouldn't express any of my thoughts or experiences. Also, sometimes I feel like I should have it all together instead of asking for help. Our mental health education in our society is much better than before. However, it is not where it needs to be. We must continue the conversation. We must make schools and places of work more aware of how this illness must be taken care of in regards to sick days. There's this huge stigma around mental health and mental illness that's this huge barrier that stops us from understanding it better and stops us from getting the help, help that we need. When I was first diagnosed, I felt alone and ashamed for my illness. But with time, I realized it's much more common than I realized. Nowadays, I know more people with mental illnesses than without. My mom, until recently, and it is still a battle educating her, hasn't been the most helpful in my mental health journey. She was raised during a time when people just said to go take a walk and they feel better. She shamed me for wanting to see a therapist. I have yet to do so. I wanted to deal with this on my own. I'm always one to keep to myself. The less I tell others, the better. Well, I think that just throughout the course of my life, we've really improved in terms of stigma for wanting and needing assistance with mental, mental issues. You know, when, when I was a teenager, early 20s, it wasn't really a thing you could consider doing without people perceiving you as being broken, really. And I know some of that persists today, but I think there is improvement there. I think we want to keep on keeping on with that, and we want to remove the stigma. My experience with mental health is troubled. Um, growing up, I had the mentality of suck it up drilled into me. And uh, so I never let myself look out the thoughts and feelings I had. As of recent, I've been more open to getting help and talking about my headspace. Growing up, I never felt like I could truly express myself, and so that led to just bottling up every thought and emotion I felt. It's not that I'm ashamed of my true self, but more so, I was trained to think that being a 
emotional and being anxious was pathetic, and I should hide that side of me. Despite what popular belief is, mental illness is much more widespread, and many people would benefit from having a better support system in place. I am ashamed to admit I need medication to make me okay. I think mental illness needs to be better understood. I've heard several people say, why can't you just be happy? Or just stop cutting yourself? People need to be more educated. The more they know, the more they are able to help. People living with mental illness need to know it is okay and it is preferable that they ask for help. I desperately want people to reach out and talk about mental illness and suicide. Everyone needs to talk about mental illness more, make it a part of regular conversation, unstigmatize it. Recognize that way more people are on meds or in therapy than you think. Our society needs to work on thinking of mental health and physical health as the same thing. Our healthcare system needs to be overhauled so that everyone can afford medical care. The treatment of serious mental health issues needs to be happening all over the place, not mainly in prisons. Financial pressures need to be eased on everyone who isn't rich so that people feel like they can actually take the time to get well without ruining their finances. I think mental health should be taught about more in school and become more normalized to ask for help because it is so common now and it's hard to ask for help when you don't know how. I grew up in a small town where if things were bad, nobody talked about it. And I always felt that way when I was there. That's the reason that I didn't want to stay there and the reason that I'm here, probably. When I was a freshman in high school, I had a girlfriend who was the principal's daughter, which I know, big man on campus. But I knew that she had a lot of mental health issues. Not because she ever told me or because she ever showed it, but I don't know what it was. I could just tell. We were really close at the time and we never talked about it because there's no... When you're 14 or whatever and you've experienced, and you've never experienced that before, what are you supposed to do? And around that same time I was thinking about the whole idea of people being gay, people having different sexual orientations, and when I tried to talk about that with my friends, they disregarded it as being against the Bible. So talking about that kind of thing with my friends was near impossible. And that, I feel like, is the way it is a lot of places. That because it's not at the forefront, or people think it's not at the forefront, that it's not a problem. How do you cope? I'm not proud of it. But I've started smoking cigarettes when my anxiety gets really high. Anxiety and depression have taken over my life. It keeps me up at night. I feel like I'm worthless. I've journaled, colored, worked out, poured into my art, cooked, and many other things to try to cope. The thing that helped me more than anything else was admitting my faults and working to improve them and setting expectations and boundaries with in my life so that I could finally have healthy relationships. This improved my mental health more than anything else I ever tried. I know when I'm really slipping down the rabbit hole that I benefit from walking outside, putting my attention into my senses, smelling plants, watching birds and insects. I also have a reaction to stress that makes me sleepy. Sleep has often been a great restorative for me. Drugs my previous addiction of methamphetamine and even marijuana. They say you can't get addicted, but I disagree. You definitely can get a mental addiction. To even just trying other things like coke, ecstasy, and pills, to other prescription drugs. Bad habits, drinking, cutting, smoking marijuana, picking at skin and creating scars. Good habits, uh, running, working out, and creating art. So far, my coping mechanisms include talking about my thoughts and feelings with a trusted friend, driving for at least an hour with no destination, or just shutting myself away and talking it out of my head. I have plenty of friends and family who deal with a multitude of mental issues, including, but not limited to, depression, bipolar disorder, and anxiety. 
For me personally, it has taken years to come to grips with my own anxiety and how I manage it on a daily basis. I feel like my big thing is I just never want to talk to anyone about it because I always feel like I'm burdening people. Stigma definitely plays a role in why I exclude myself from others. Staying up too late, um, substance, just using, drinking, whatever. Taking risks I probably don't need to, just being reckless in general. And healthy ways, doing things to keep your mind away from it. Physical activity was a great one that I used. Hanging out with friends, doing things that I actually like finding hobbies that I'd forgotten that I really liked doing and doing those again. But honestly, a lot of it was just keeping people around me that have the same mindset. I see so many people not getting help because either they can't financially do it or they just don't like the therapy idea. And their friends and family aren't helping them either. I'm not sure how to help everyone, but I think that if more people were taught the warning signs, then maybe we could get more individuals to open up to people they're close to and maybe save some lives. In the past, I have experienced self-harming thoughts and actions. However, in recent years, when I've focused more on my mental health, I have developed healthier habits and have learned how to become okay with being alone. I talk with a spiritual director every month. I also have a tight circle of friends and family who are always there as a support group. This is crucial. I've spoken with a therapist from time to time as well. My daily practices are those of mindfulness, meditation, and spiritual ritual. These keep me grounded and in touch with my true self. Sleeping, coloring, music, and talking to someone I know cares about me. My cat is my doctor recognized ESA. She has been a tremendous help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I was afraid I'd be ridiculed for how I was feeling. But the faculty and students at Jewel were so extremely helpful. When anxiety comes on strong, it's often enough for me to simply know that I have a pill that I can take and that will clear it up. That knowledge often calms me enough to manage my anxiety. Physical activity, doing chores, and exercising helps as well. But slow deep breathing can calm me down too. Don't drink. Be productive. Take care of your brain. Good habits. I guess I've gotten better about work-life balance and time management. Bad habits. I stress eat and drink. I have developed an authentic and genuine relationship with God, and that has helped me more than anything else ever has. It took me a long time to get there with God, though. <laughs> I don't think society takes it seriously. I think it's one of those things that's like OCD, for instance. Uh, I think most people in America think of Sheldon when they think of OCD, and you know, it's quirky and it's comical and that type of thing, but I think that very few people realize what OCD actually is, and I, I think that depression is, is much the same way. For me, when I don't have my depression under control, it's just a, a weight that's like, I don't know, like a hundred pound sandbag that I have to carry around with me all day, every day. And it prevents me from feeling like I can do anything. I don't know. And even when I have my, my depression under control, I, I know that's a temporary situation. It's not a thing that gets fixed. It's a thing, it's a thing I've learned how to live with. Have you ever attended therapy? I've been in and out of therapy. And I must say, I have a love-hate relationship with it. If you don't find a therapist you absolutely click with, then it's most likely not gonna work. I've been in and out with multiple professionals, and just recently, within the last two years, I found one I can actually stick with. I haven't gone to the doctor because my anxiety isn't as bad as others, uh, so I don't want to seem whiny or exaggerated. I tried lots of medications, but eventually stopped and started doing holistic medicine instead because of the side effects. Therapy is amazing. Therapy was a waste until I found the right therapist. Then he retired. 
I've never been to therapy, although I may try to go eventually. I never went because of either financial issues and the social stigma that going to therapy would truly mark me as a broken person. I also have been able to cope long enough on my own, so I haven't gone because I've never felt like I've been to the point where I needed it. Yes. I've tried every medication the doctor could think of and multiple types of therapy. Being a teenage female led to every doctor or therapist I had thinking I was being dramatic or making it up. I no longer look to these types of mental health professionals because I was able to figure out how to help myself be healthier than any of them ever could. But I know that mental health care is extremely important to a lot of people and I know there are good professionals out there, I just haven't found them yet. I find that medication with therapy helps me best, but I know that that might not be the same for everyone. While I haven't been to therapy myself, I still strongly advocate for it. In the past year alone, I've been around four people who have each been dealing with a mental health crisis, and all four of them have sought out professional help and are doing so much better for it. Therapy was not for me. Struggling with depression, I needed the fastest answer, and therapy was a process. I have been on multiple medications, which are my saving grace. I also found a really wonderful psychologist. It took several visits before I even got a chance to see the therapist, and then the therapist was insulting. The only treatment I've ever had was visiting a therapist at college. The most regularly I did that was about once a week, and now that I'm in grad school, I'm lucky to have it once a month. Mental illness is common. It's not wrong or shameful for you to take medication in order to remain balanced. Medicine can help you be more like you. I always thought maybe one day I wouldn't need medication anymore and I could just go back to the person I was. Now I realize it's nothing to be ashamed of. Instead, the medicine helps me be more my normal self. It's all right to seek help for anything you feel could be wrong. I don't think my anxiety is bad enough to seek treatment. Following the death of my friend, I went to therapy. Honestly, I was really angry at the time and didn't know how to talk about things or express what I felt. I still don't really know how. I stopped after five-ish weeks. In the time since, I really wish I could go back and not stop, or I wish I could start going again. I currently take antidepressants and have attended therapy in the past. And I no longer attend therapy because behavioral health was not covered by my health insurance when I switched jobs. It's too expensive. I was diagnosed with chronic depression, anxiety, and PTSD when I was 12 years old likely due to the physical, verbal, and emotional abuse I endured as a child. When I was 14, due to my not knowing how to cope with my mental illnesses and my father being in denial that they existed, I put myself in a dangerous situation where I was raped by a man I barely knew. He was 18, I was 14. When I told a future boyfriend about it, he got jealous and angry and told everyone at school that I had sex with a random man, was a whore, a drug addict, and an alcoholic. He also photoshopped fake nude pictures of me and sent them to a bunch of people from our school. The bullying I received consequently led me to try to kill myself at age 15. I was unsuccessful, but I was put on about eight different medications. I was so drugged up from my medications that I barely remember anything from age 15 to 18. I went on to cope using alcohol, drugs, and sex. This led me to getting raped again at 19 in my dorm room at college. It was soon after that that I spoke to my doctor about how my medications were affecting me and we decided to see if I could wean myself off of them. We eventually figured out that my medications were causing even more imbalances than I had before, so I needed to stop taking them to figure out where my mental health truly was. I spent 10 years being told I was making things up or that I was crazy or lying. I hated therapy because of the terrible therapists I had. I also allowed myself to hurt the people I loved because I didn't have healthy coping mechanisms and I messed up sex for myself because it doesn't mean anything to me anymore and I used to be fearful of it after being raped twice. 
twice. I am now married, and I have a wonderful stepdaughter that I adopted, and we are trying to have another child, but my mental illness still pops up out of nowhere sometimes. I figured out healthy coping mechanisms and how to be a healthy person and friend previously, but I'm still not okay sometimes, and that's okay. How do you think society perceives people with mental illness? <laughs> Bad? Like, oh, you don't know how to deal with your problems? You're like the outcast. You're weird that you have to deal with all this. Well, I think we can look and see that I don't think we're super progressive with mental illness because, I mean, what was it, like 50 or 60 years ago that we were still doing lobotomies? People living with mental illness should be treated as if they have a physical illness. People with physical illnesses go to the doctor, their symptoms are taken into account, and they get treatment. Having and coping with mental illness has real side effects, just like physical illness. When I went to my college about being raped on their campus and then being sexually harassed by another student and discussing my mental health due to these instances, I was told they didn't have time to make an appointment for me and that I needed to go elsewhere. People need to be believed. Mental wellness should be a basic human right that everyone has access to. Nobody should be turned away if they're asking for help. Do you have any advice for others? No, I'm not qualified to give advice. There is no shame in asking for help. For younger people, I would say to try different kinds of therapy before resorting to medication. And if you do use meds, try to work with the doctor who can help you use them when you need them and be off them when you can. But by all means, if your life or the lives of anyone around you are currently endangered by your mental health, then get on meds right away. And be thankful that the medical profession has the science to help you. Don't be afraid to talk about your feelings. Leaving things in the past may seem like a way out, but having that in the back of your mind at all times doesn't help. Find someone and talk it out. I would like to see counseling be a regular part of people's lives, whether they consider themselves to need assistance or not. I think that getting a counselor, therapist, you know, whatever the term, is one of the biggest gifts that a person can give to another person and to those around them. There's a role that the therapist plays that benefits the entire community of people that you know are interacting with that one person that went to the therapist. Don't forget that your best and someone else's best may not be the same. Your getting out of bed may be their receiving a promotion. Keep going at your pace. Depression is hell. It's scary and mean and is a mountain of emotions. Keep fighting because someone cares. I promise you. Even when it feels like there is no one, there's someone. Don't be afraid to reach out. That's what those psychologists and therapists are there for. It's okay to not be okay. Talk to people. If it's friends, tell them you just want to be heard, not fixed. That you can trust them enough that they can just listen. That can be really hard, both for you and your friend. Be careful of overindulging in anything or activity that gives you relief, drinking, drugs, even exercise, because it can become an addiction that is a different kind of unhealthy. Go ahead and feel what you are feeling. It's so much better to let it happen than repress it, because it will still come out of you. Make boundaries between your wellness and your lifestyle. If you don't make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your illness eventually. Mental illness, high functioning or not, is no excuse to give up trying. You have to keep trying to be introspective and compassionate to others. Medication and therapy are useful tools to aid wellness, but the, the real results come from within the effort that you put into yourself. Talk to trusted people, of course. Seek wise counsel and help. Seeking out help from friends, family, and professionals has helped me learn healthier habits to handle my depression. I've also sought out experiences and activities that have made me feel like I'm contributing to others' lives in a positive way. Don't avoid your emotions that are difficult to handle. Instead, actively acknowledge them and find healthier ways to handle them. Find what works for you and do it, then stick to it. 
Don't be ashamed if you need medication or therapy. Don't be ashamed if you don't need medication or therapy. Everyone is different, and what's most important is what will make you the healthiest and happiest that you can be. Find yourself. You are better than what you think. Look at everything that you've accomplished, and not everything that you've failed. Stop thinking of it as something that needs to be fixed, and start looking at it as relieving suffering, or entering another stage. I'm not sure who... I am. Not sure. I'm disconnected. From me. Myself. My own reality. Sometimes. I don't know. Who is this woman once a girl? Who is this man once a boy? Don't know. Who are they? Who knows? Do I ask? Excuse me, officer, can you tell me which way it is? Don't know. Mere fudge the truth. Disconnected. From me. From others. From Mama Earth. From Mother. From Mom. Mama who bore me. A nod to our mom. Who destroyed me. Are you okay? Yeah, nobody. Ask. Why is, is that? that? Is it? Because we're all in the same pain. Distracted. Do you need help? No. Do you need sleep? All in the same game. Hurt. Going to bed. I am asleep. Are you all right? I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Huh? Nobody thinks? That they might be dying. Without or within. Neglectful. Neglecting the abandoned. But I refuse to fall in line. Distracted, but... I'm fine. Fine, but... Would I really rather be in a casket? Or walk around one more day as this zombie one more day? Dead? Rotting flesh, eating brains. There aren't any brains to eat anymore. Starved. One more day, wasteland. One more day, wasted. I just need to get through one more day. Then I realize... Slowly. A thought. Emerging. An epiphany. It's, it's, it's our, our fault. fault. We're the cause. Of our own demise. Of their demise. Shoulders are weight. On the shoulders of giants. Giant assholes. What? Gone into the unknown. I am the artist. Composer and conductor. The architect. I build these lies. These walls that I call. My home. My high rise. My comfort. My love. My hero. My heroine. Dope. Meth. Oxytocin. Serotonin. Dopamine. Though I was, con or is it rather my. Prison. Chaos. Though I was conditioned. Should I overcome my own conditions? Do you accept these terms and conditions? Full disclosure disconnected. From reality. From our lives. Anger. It's born. From pain. Scars. Invisible. Or visible. Before we know it. Daunting. It's dawn.